I'm Peggy Farron, and we are live with the Understand Photography Show, where we talk about travel and nature photography. Welcome to episode 21. I always have to start with a little commercial. We're going to Mount Dora. We're having a ladies-only trip to Mount Dora, Florida, and if you don't know where that is, it is, it is so adorable. It's like Victorian homes, got a chain of lakes. We take a, a boat trip in the canals. Or the birds are like right next to you practically. It's really, really fun. We learn all kinds of photography. It's kind of like a little boot camp. So you're there to learn, but learn and have fun. It's only a couple weeks from now. It's February 8th through the 10th, ladies only. And we've got openings, so come, come with me. Anyway, and then we also have a trip to St. Augustine, May 4th through the 7th, and Joe Fitzpatrick is the leader of that trip. You can check our entire ca calendar on our Meetup site, which is meetup.com slash understandphotography, or you can get to it from our website, which is understandphotography.com. Now, we're about to send out our monthly newsletter, and it's full of photography tips and our schedule and things like that. So if you're not subscribed to our newsletter already, please subscribe. You can subscribe right here on the Facebook page or go to our website at understandphotography.com. This show, after it's live right now, but then we're going to put it on YouTube as a video and then as on iTunes as a podcast. So we're really, really trying to get noticed on iTunes. So I'm begging you. It, if you do a, go on the podcasts in iTunes, do a search for the Understand Photography Show, and then leave us a good review and rate us and listen and subscribe and thank you so much. <laughs> anyway, today my guest is Brian Call. Brian is a fine art nature photography as photographer as well as an imaging specialist. Um, he works at a fine art printing company called Prince Gicle in Miami. So he came all the way over from Miami for the show. So that was really nice. That was nice. Brian's been exhibiting his work. Um, in solo and in group exhibitions. His work is collected nationally and internationally, and his photographs, has he's been published all over the place. He's on TV, he's in print, he's on the website. He's easy to find. That's how I found him. <laughs> so welcome, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming and all the way over. It's a <laughs> two hour drive, right? Uh, yes, yeah. yes, at, at least a two hour drive, so. At least you weren't driving it at sunset with the sun blasting in your face. Right. <laughs> Although I have done that quite a bit. Yeah, so. me too. That's why, that's why I think about driving over Alligator Alley with mm -hmm. the sun in my face. Mm -hmm. So, all right, so tell, tell me a little bit about, about you. How did you, have you been a photographer like ever since you were young or did you get into it? Actually, no. I, I went to art school. I went to art school at Montserrat College of Art in, in Beverly, Massachusetts and uh, never picked up a camera throughout my whole four years uh, there. So were you a painter, a um, sculptor? Yeah, it was, um, it, at the time, it, the, the school was a, um, uh, very heavily centered on the fine arts. It wasn't even accredited at that point, okay. um, which it is now. Um, but um, so it was really, um, you know, you, very strong foundation in the fine arts. So yes, painting, oh, drawing, awesome. uh, sculpture, uh, so I got a really great background in that art history. Um, so it was um, an amazing experience and um, really got me ready, um, you know, to be the artist that I am today. Uh -huh. um, so uh, I'm very thankful for that. So um, yeah, because most photographers say that, you know, mm -hmm. when we teach our composition classes, mm -hmm. You know, most photographers don't have that background and, yeah. you know, they're kind of winging it and they might have a good eye, but mm -hmm. they don't really understand all the rules. And not yeah. that you have to always follow the rules, but sometimes mm -hmm. it makes it better. It's nice yeah. to know them anyway. Yeah, definitely. And so I stepped into photography. Uh, I, I taught myself. Um, I, I actually got a, a book by John Shaw and um, learned all the mechanics of uh, what's, shooting. What's the name of the book? Uh, I Beginning John, Shaw. John Shaw's beginning photography and it was or a something. Good book. Yes, yeah. definitely. Yeah. And uh, so I learned all about the f-stops and the timing and, and and all of that and apertures and and I already had a sense of that anyway because I worked in jobs where I I, I um, as a graphic designer uh, okay. after graduation and um, I would um, you know use stack cameras back then. Okay. Um, and so I kind of figured out all of that, you know, but I, I, I did have a little bit of a foundation with that. 
Um, but you know, working a camera that was its own thing too. So. So what what got you interested in it? In um, mostly uh, just my love of nature, and uh -huh. so I took a trip to the Caribbean. And now, were you living in Massachusetts? Yes. Okay. This is. Uh, I lived in. Uh, I'm originally from Massachusetts. Okay. And um, and um, took a trip to the Caribbean. And of course, you know, brought a camera that you know you could um, take underwater as well. Oh wow! And so uh, I took a bunch of photos on that trip. Came back, and uh, I, re I remember showing everyone in my karate school, you know, in, in the uh, school that I went to for karate. And uh, by by like the fiftieth fish, you know, fish shot, you know, <laughs> they were all like, "Yeah, okay," you know. <laughs> but I had the bug right then and there. I, I, I just knew, it. yeah. And so when um, I moved here to Miami, um, I was actually a stained glass artist at the time. Whoa! Yeah, I yeah. I love stained glass. Yeah. So um, I did that up in Massachusetts for several years, and so I was, yeah, I was a professional uh, uh, stained glass artist. Wow. And moved here, and um, I worked for a couple of studios uh, down here as well. And, um, in stained glass studios. In, yeah, in okay. stained glass studios. Wow. And, and they uh, have more than one in Miami? Yes, yeah, yeah. Wow, I didn't. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't think we have any over here in Naples. <laughs> <laughs> good to know, good to know, because if I ever want to open one up, I, I'll, yeah. this would be a good market. A lot of money so here, you know. <laughs> definitely. Um, but anyway, yeah, I enjoyed that very much. But, um, you know, loving nature, um, uh, you know, I would go out to the Everglades. And my first ventures out into the Everglades was just, you know, I just fell in love. Um, one of my first experiences, um, you know, out there, um, a storm came up and, um, you know, kind of got hunkered, hunkered down in this open air, uh, you know, cover. Uh, out in, um, uh, what was it, uh, the Anhinga Trail at uh, Everglades National Park. Uh -huh. And uh, was lightning. There lightning in Yes, anything? yeah. Ooh. The lightning uh, struck so close it made my hair stand up. And so you don't want to get any closer. A lot than of that. people get struck by lightning in Florida. Yeah, man, definitely. I yeah. would have been scared. <laughs> it was loud. It was more loud than anything. It was just wow, you know. But all, all of my hair stood up right, right before it struck, and then it just struck. So. To me, I see that as the Everglades saying welcome. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so. funny because, you know, I was telling you before we started about, you mm -hmm. know, my background as a portrait and wedding photographer. And then mm -hmm. when I started teaching, I started getting into the nature stuff because that's what all my students want to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first time I did my the swamp walk, I, I got... It was like the same thing. I got mm -hmm. like the bug. Oh my God, yeah. I got to get back out there, you know? Yeah, definitely. And taking the camera kind of gives you something more to do. Like gives you a purpose mm -hmm. instead of just walking around or well, something. Well, I mean, yeah, definitely. Um, I was bringing the camera as well. And um, at the time I was married um, and I uh, was using my wife's old uh, broken, uh, it was a Pentax camera with a broken light meter. So this is still in the days of film, everybody. So, so you just <laughs> memorize settings? Uh, yeah, kind of. Or did they have program I, mode? I or? tried anyway. I, I tried adjusting, but you know, the, some of the shots would be off, you know, um, which it didn't matter to me. I just, I just loved, you know, getting out there and, and attempting to photograph. Yeah. And, you know, the, the, the um, exposures weren't the greatest, you know, but I, I got shots of alligators and snakes and you know marsh rabbits and it's fun being out there. Yeah, I, I yeah. really have the bug now. I can't yeah. get enough of it. <laughs> yeah, it was it was pretty it was pretty amazing. I mean, it always is, and um, I could spend several lifetimes, you know, you know, documenting uh, and having experiences out in the Everglades. And now you aren't you far, you're part of a book right called. Florida Bay Forever? Yes. And what is that? Um, that was um, a project that Dan Burkhart really wanted to produce for the Everglades Foundation uh, for their 20th anniversary. Okay. And the whole point of it was to um, illustrate the importance of the water flow from uh, Lake Okeechobee south all the way through you know, the Everglades ecosystem and as it you know, passes through there and, and into Florida Bay. And um, the big concern is, you know, the water quality, uh, as well as the actual movement of that water, um, and you know, in as clean a form as possible, um, you know, to get into Florida Bay. Um, 
And so one of the major problems right now is uh, not enough water getting, you know, flowing south. And a lot of the water that is um, getting drained off of Lake Okeechobee is being diverted through the St. Lucie River and um, um, the Caloosahatchee River and estuaries that they're connected to and causing a lot of problems because of the, um, the nutrient. It's very nutrient-rich water uh, mm. from the farms and... Oh, and right, so, right, yeah. right. So um, the big concern is, um, you know, getting that water, you know, preventing from that water discharge into, the, into those rivers and then having it flow south through okay. the Everglades agricultural uh, area uh -huh. um, where the state is wanting to, um, you know, purchase that, those lands so that that water can travel south through Everglades and, um, you know, in holding areas and then traveling south and um, hopefully, you know, it's filtered through, you know, the sawgrass prairies and, and um, you know, gets cleaned up by the time it reaches Florida Bay. Okay, and so that's, that's, how, the goal. that's the way it's supposed to go. Yes. It's supposed to be filtered through mm -hmm. the grass and yeah. all that other stuff, but instead it's going through mm -hmm. the rivers, and so they're trying to... Yeah, and it's causing a lot of algae. to bring awareness of yeah, it so that they can... You know, that's on, the red on tide, both, right? Yeah, both sides yeah. of the coast and causing dead zones. So uh, it's, it's really not good for the environment, uh, for us to be doing that to the environment. Right. Because it's just, it's killing, you know, thousands of fish. So this book... Um, it's showing the importance of you know the the um, you know the connections that that um, you know um, that w that clean water has to a healthy uh, so ecosystem. So you've got some beautiful pictures in there showing yeah, how this but is how also, it's supposed to be. Yeah, or? and um, for also for our own health, you know, as well, because that's also a source of drink. You know, it's the source of drinking water for you know people here, and so we really don't want to mess that up because we, if we do. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's not good for it's us. It's not good, yeah. yeah. Yeah, actually I have a friend here visiting from Michigan and, and uh, I got new sod put in and then the county told me that they were going to dig it up mm -hmm. to do something else. And I said, I just spent all that money on watering that thing. And right. she like pays like $20 a month for water in Michigan. Mm -hmm. And I pay a lot of money. I mean, well, you live here too. The water mm -hmm. is really expensive. I don't know what they need to do. It was, it's so funny because we're in the a wet area. Yeah. But yeah. we pay a but lot, a lot of, of money for water. Too. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of it gets the burden. And, and that's probably why. I don't know. Yeah. I'm just guessing. Yeah. And, and um, one of the problems too is when there's not enough water traveling through the Everglades ecosystem, um, it really threatens the aquifer that's mm -hmm. underneath that that's underneath um, uh, the Everglades, and um, if there's not enough water pressure, fresh water uh, pressure moving south, uh, then you've got problems with saltwater intrusion into a lot of those aquifers. Oh, or other that, yeah. that affects the crops and mm -hmm. the, all your yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. So yeah. no, is that how you? How did they know about you and your photography with this guy? Um, I. Gosh, um, I was uh, on my way home. I was traveling from the Fakahatchee Strand late at night. It's like around 11.30 or so. And I found a roadkill Florida panther kitten. And oh. um, on my way is on State Road 29. And, um, you know, my first instinct was, you know, I pulled over right away because that was my first sighting of a Florida panther. And um, that was not the way I really wanted yeah. to see a Florida panther. So. Um, it, my, my flash unit was acting up I and mean, the, the last thing I wanted to do was take a photo of that scene, but I knew that, you know, I, I might be able to do something if, you know, I, I can, you know, produce some Yeah, images. document it, right? Yeah. And so, um, you know, I, I took photos and then, um, I moved the cat out of the road because I could hear the mom calling out to her. Aww. Yeah, it was it was pretty sad. Oh, I would have been scared though that the mom <laughs> would come after me. <laughs> no, no, no. They, they um, they're very shy. They're, they're very yeah. shy uh, animals. Um, a lot of people do feel that, but um, they're very shy. And I actually brought the kitten over to where I heard her, because okay. I didn't. I really didn't want her to come out into the road and, oh, and get hit herself. Yeah. Good point. And so um, I wait. I, I went to the sheriff's station and reported it, and then. They sent out like three squad cars, so we, we all went back and we waited for the Fish and Wildlife Commission to come and pick oh, up. Oh, you were up all night. Yeah. Ah. yeah. <laughs> um, but I, uh, the photos did come out, and um, I organized a roadside awareness memorial for 
um, um, for her and her brother because he was also killed that night as well. Oh my god! And it was gosh. the first time that we lost two panthers in one night. Wow. Um, and so when I was putting up posters for the event, um, I ran into one of the um, members of the Friends of the Florida Panther Refuge and um, and he was like, what are you doing? What's going on? You know, mm -hmm. and I told him everything and they said, well, you got to come to one of our meetings. So I did and they, they offered to help with the event and I, I immediately became a member. Okay. And so I've been involved with um, Panther issues for, you know, pretty much ever since. Okay. Um, I'm no longer really with the group right now, um, but I do lend my voice uh, to Panther issues and um, anytime I can speak up for them, I do. Um, and um, I think through my involvement with um, the Friends group, you get to know all the National Park Service people. You get to know yeah. all the the, um, uh, the staff out of the Panther Refuge, and and um, um, so you get to make a lot of good connections and uh, superintendents of the national parks, and and so it's it's really great um, as far as networking. Um, my involvement with environmental issues. Um, so it's you know it's been more than just you know, a, a, a job for me. Mm -hmm, it's it's mm -hmm. really my passion. So I, I get involved, you know, as and much as I can. And then people see your beautiful photography yeah. and they want to use it and for... Yeah, so there's been certain life challenges, you know, uh, since then. And I haven't been able to, you know, be involved like I was with the friends. I'm a past president. Um, but I still wanted to be involved with you know conservation issues so i usually make my images available to uh, environmental organizations I see. Okay. and i donate you know i donate the usage wow. for for them to use and in turn you know it's great exposure for me so yeah. um you know when people say that you know i'm you know i i'm seen in a lot of places yeah you know that's one of the reasons why is because you know I, so i've been involved i think that's great because uh it's well it, they have a name for it called charitable marketing mm -hmm. i mean you're not even marketing really but you yeah. really are too at the same yeah. time uh, yeah there's, there's a give and take you know as well and it's um, great it's a good thing i mean there's yeah. nothing wrong with it i don't think some people are like oh they should just do you should just do stuff out of your goodness or your heart but mm -hmm. i mean we all have to work and mm -hmm. make a living and you know so if you can do something good and it helps your living yeah yeah definitely and that everglades foundation has some big this is, who's who's like started that? Some big famous person. Mary, Mary, um, I forgot her husband's name now. Um, I can't remember who it is now. Um, oh well. <laughs> no, the, the Barleys. The, the Barleys had started it, so I just okay. Forgot his name. That's not who I'm thinking. Yeah. Whatever. So, um, tell me about the artist in residence exhibit. What what was that all about? Um, where. Because I, don't I've, know. I've I read it on your <laughs> website. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you're talking about the Daring Estate, um, I had yes, like, that I had, is what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, I had a year-long artist and resi residence with the, the the Daring Estate, and that's that big old mansion over there in Miami. Mm -hmm. That yeah, it's like it's a really four, cool. 440 acre nature preserve, historic site, and archaeological sites. Major so archaeological had, sites. For a year, you had an exhibit there. No, um, I had my artist in residence for a year. What does that mean? Um, basically, uh, if I wanted to um, set up shop uh, at the estate, but I, I just lived right down the street. So, um, you know, that I, I just went on property and, and I would take photos, um, you know, and produce a body of work inspired um, by, you know, being on the estate. Oh. And, um, and then throughout the year, I had three shows. Uh, there? Yes. In mm -hmm. that big old fancy mansion? Mm -hmm. that's, mm -hmm. that's really cool. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's in Miami, place. right? Yeah, is it in Miami? Place. I've been mm -hmm. there. I just can't remember now. It's mm -hmm. been a long time. Yeah. I just remember reading the whole history. It was really interesting. Mm -hmm. So, like, he was, like, couldn't he get married really late in life or not married at all or something? Yeah, I can't remember yeah. now. But it was, <laughs> I remember it was a, he had an interesting story. Anyway. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so. so he's the half-brother of um, the, uh, the guy that... Um, uh, owned Vizcaya. That's oh, that, uh, that built, I don't think I that, did that know. built Vizcaya. Mm -hmm. God, Vizcaya is beautiful. You got a lot yeah. of cool stuff over there in Miami. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's getting cooler. I mean, they're, they're, just, they're discovering new things all the time. 
at the estate. Uh, it's oh, pretty wow. amazing. Arche archaeologically speaking, it's, it's pretty amazing. So now, how did you get that gig to be the artist in residence? Um, I, I was asked, and, you know, I was asked to, to um, yeah, um, you know, be part of that program uh, through my involvement, again, with environmental issues and so they asked you. You didn't mm -hmm. say, hey, no, yeah. wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, so they're, they're really great about reaching out to um, artists uh, in the community and um, representing you know, those artists and giving them a nice, you know, a, a safe and environment you know, to produce a body of work. And then they exhibit. So it's, it's really a great opportunity for artists and photographers. Well, and you get a lot of publicity. I mean, right? You've mm -hmm. been published, and you're on TV and all this other yeah, stuff. Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. is that just like one thing leading to another? Yeah, yeah. I had a friend, um, uh, my friend Bill. He would always say, you know, it's always a past body of work. You know, that takes uh -huh. you to the next one. And another statement that he always used to say is, and it's come in handy. Is, is you want to put your, you want to place yourself where lightning will strike. So. And you did. Yeah. Ah, literally. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it got you some good pictures, right, yeah. which makes you made you recognize. Mm -hmm. da, 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 mm -hmm. da. Yeah. So, all right. So if you let's say we have, I'm going to get to photography soon. I That's swear. okay. <laughs> no, this is great. <laughs> um, but if you yeah. had advice to give, okay, say you know, there's a lot of nature photographers who come through my training center, mm -hmm. and uh, they want to get started. And so, well, the, go ahead. the big thing is, you know, for everybody is getting published. And so the easiest way is, again, it's, you know, what I've been doing is you donate. You know, you donate, donate your, your images to whoever. Uh, and then you start building up a body of work. And then you, you now have uh, a, a working portfolio. And so then you can, you know, go directly. I mean, you can always just go directly to people that, that purchase. And, I mean, and, and if your work is good, um, you know, you can get published that way. But, um, you know, for, for, you know, beginners that, you know, so they really want to break in, um, that's, that's one way. So how do you get published? Um, a lot of these uh, organizations, donating. They, you just said that. Yeah, yeah. So donating. Yeah, so, so you donating, donate like you're involved in the Everglades Foundation, the Wild, mm -hmm. the Panther. Yeah, South something. Florida National Parks Trust. Uh, and so they they, they, they use the pictures for their brochures up. and their websites mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Now I have to stop for a quick commercial because we have one opening left for our all-day workshop. It's called How to Sell Your Photography as Art featuring Carolyn Edlin. She, er, Carolyn is the owner of Artsy Shark and she's a bu an art business consultant. So she's going to be teaching a, a, a day, daytime work, uh, 9 to 3 I think it is, on Saturday, February 25th and we have one opening left. So check that out anyway. Anyway, sorry, I have to That's do my okay. little commercials here and there when you, when <laughs> you, you give me the opening. <laughs> <laughs> <There you go. laughs> so can you share some of your favorite locations in the Everglades? Oh man, uh, Fakahatchee Strand, that's one. That's so I mean, funny, Everglades like National we were talking Park. before, yeah. because we who live over here by the Fakahatchee Strand, we mm -hmm. always go over to Everglades National right. Park, and then you who lives in Miami comes over to mm -hmm. Fakahatchee. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that's a beautiful yeah. spot. You can, there's the possibility of seeing panthers. I mean, big cypress. Uh, I used to work out at Clyde Butcher's Big Cypress Gallery, and oh, cool. uh, my work cycle was eight days on, si uh, six days off. So did you live so there? So I, I would live on site. Did you live in that trailer that I stayed in? Next to that one. Oh. Yeah, I had another trailer out there. So you lived there for eight days? Yeah. And you yeah. opened the gallery? And opened the gallery. The f if, uh, if it was summertime, it was just me. Now, I'm, I, was, I would be the only staff person for those eight days. Wow. Uh, you have the whole place to yourself. And then you took, you did the swamp walks. You took the, oh, yeah, tour, yeah. the tourists out in the mm -hmm, swamp too, mm -hmm, right? Yeah. That's and cool. And you know, going on past experience, I mean, I used to work for another company in Miami, Dragonfly Expeditions, and um, I started, you know, and that leading was doing tours. tours. Yeah, oh. leading tours with them, and um, and so I I gained you know experience you know, with them. That was the really the first tour company that I would work for. And that was in the Everglades. 
Yeah, and that was all over. So okay. it would be Everglades, it would be Loxahatchee, um, it would be uh, uh, Key Biscayne, bike okay. tours out there. So we did a whole bunch of different types of tours. Okay. So it got me used to, you know, getting in front of people and, you know, talking and, you know, uh, giving presentations. And, and learning about the history and yeah, area, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, because we have a, we do old Naples photo tours and mm -hmm. so I had to learn the history of Naples. Mm -hmm. oh, the problem with Naples, though, is I, I wrote out the script, mm -hmm. and uh, before our first tour, they had already torn one of the houses down. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, that's <laughs> what they do here. They just tear everything down. Yeah. <laughs> so I did, let's take that off the tour, you know? <laughs> we don't have a lot of history here. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have history, but it's gone. They tore it all down. Yeah, one of our um, uh, stops at uh, Key Biscayne was um, uh, Richard Nixon's old old property. Oh, and I didn't know he lived yeah. there. Or everybody lives and in Florida, um, don't they? <laughs> the, the house, the original house was, I think, torn down or something, And uh, but the original doors uh, from his, his house were, were, were still there. Yes. And There's they, the they were door a gift. he went in. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> but it was, uh, I think it was um, a gift from B.B. Uh, I forgot his name. Bozo or something like that, but anyway, um, it was one of the, you know, things that we would point out to people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but it was fun mm -hmm. to know that. And you used to hang out at Stiltsville too, so. I've never been there yet. I yeah. want to go. We have it's beautiful out fishing there. shacks in Pine Island Sound, mm -hmm. not like that, but mm -hmm. they're they're smaller, and but one yeah. of them is painted red. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fun to photograph. Yeah. So. It, during my uh, uh, my um, artist in residence with uh, Biscayne National Park, and they they really don't have. Um, a, um, a hard, you know, um, program for artists and residents, but okay. they, they, they do offer something. Uh -huh. And so um, I was able to uh, get out to Stiltsville and actually stay overnight. Oh, and wow. Yeah, several times, actually. How are the mosquitoes? No, that, that's not bad. Um, really? Mosquitoes, yeah, there's so much uh, wind. And, oh, okay. You know, so, yeah, that's, that's not too bad. Um, or if it's a, you know, a, a quiet night, um, you don't really get mosquitoes. But um, they do watch, you know, they, they, they do want you to watch um, taking any paper products because then th that kind of can carry um, the eggs of um, cockroaches. Uh, yeah, yeah, so that's one of the things that they try and, you know. You, and you know how we love cockroaches. Right, right, right. But uh, it's, be it's beautiful out there. Um, never had any problems with any of the, you know, the local wildlife <laughs> like that. You know, so, but it's, it's an amazing experience. And, that uh, would be cool. Yeah, yeah. Were you out there all by yourself? Yes. Wow. Yeah, it, w it was... Um, I think I might be scared. Pretty amazing, uh, you know, um, experiences out there for sure especially late at night sometimes you get people that that you know take their boats and drive up and you're out there all by yourself so you don't know what to expect yeah. and um, I had a boat show up once and I had to call the police and and so the police were like okay so what, um, what's what's your address and I'm like well I'm not at Stiltsville and they're like, well, what's the street address? <laughs> they really, and I should have called Marine Patrol first, but yeah. I, I got passed around quite a bit. Oh, so. my God. That's but that was funny. a funny, um, oh my funny God. story. Yeah, I'd be, I would be scared out there. Yeah. There's a place we have, you know, down when um, Caloosahatchee River out of mm -hmm. Fort Myers, mm -hmm. and there's a two-story uh, houseboat, I guess, mm -hmm. that the downstairs is a... 24-hour convenience store, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then they live upstairs, mm -hmm. and it's two brothers, I think, anyway, and I'm like, you're up in 24 hours, it's, it's just funny, too, he's got, like, mannequins hanging off of it and <laughs> stuff, you know, it's like a goofy yeah. place, I'm like, 24 hours, you know, he goes, drunk chicks in bikini in the middle of the night, I'm okay with that, <laughs> 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 okay, whatever, <laughs> all right, so mm -hmm. say I'm just you know, I want to get into landscape photography. Mm -hmm. I've got my basics of photography down, but now mm -hmm. I want to get into landscape photography. Okay. What's what do I do? What do I need to? What kind of equipment do I need? Well, camera, of course. Um, tripod, definite. A good know. tripod, or yeah. what can I get a cheap one? Um, as good as you can afford. Um, I went out. Actually, went out to Fakahatchee off of Jane's Scenic Drive la last night, yesterday, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with my friend Chris Hopkins and. Uh, He's showing me his tripod. 
really write stuff is mm -hmm. what I use this and I'm going well this is these are expensive like 600 800 bucks he goes like sixteen hundred dollars wow. <laughs> it's like mm -hmm. okay yeah <laughs> I, I got um I think it was a Manfrotto um uh carbon fiber that's uh, what so I it's have. lighter you know um and um it's it's fine it's perfect um I think I got it on the road uh so I probably um because I was doing our art festivals and I oh, really, oh. really wanted to, you know, I forgot my tripod, so. <laughs> um, so I really wanted to have a tripod and so it was like $500, something like that. I have a, I have a Manfrotto with a ball head that was about 250 and it's, mm -hmm. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not as into it as, as you yeah. know, some people, but it yeah. seems like it's, it's a decent tripod to mm -hmm. me. And it is, it's lightweight. And mm -hmm. Because they've come down a lot in price. Because my one before that was over five hundred dollars, and yeah. I don't, I can't see the difference. But I think they've come down. Mm -hmm. That's why. But yeah. Um, so another piece of equipment that's useful is the um, uh, shutter shutter release. So oh, I think yeah. they're electronic now. Do um, you recommend the electronic one? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think they're all electronic now anyway. But um, I, mine, you know what? I I like the plug-in kind because yeah. they work every time. Mm -hmm. Where those electronic ones it seems yeah. like because you know we lead the tours and we mm -hmm. got all these people with electric and we're sitting there messing with those stupid electronic wow, okay, shutter so releases if they, do, if they do make them i mean yeah, either they're like, one they're eight dollars to plug them in they're yeah. cheaper too <laughs> yeah, either one you know to, to make you know if but they, then if you're they work. but then you're stuck you know right by your camera you can't mm -hmm. move away or anything mm -hmm. So, yeah, but I you're don't right. Have one. <laughs> you don't have one I don't either, have right? One. It's good to have, and I'm, I'm, I'm recommending something that I personally what did don't you use have. A timer? I just use a timer. Yeah, I use a timer a lot too because mm -hmm. I have to admit I have many of them mm -hmm. because every time I go out on a photo tour with people, I forget it, mm -hmm. and they're like eight dollars, so people buy them for me yeah. as gifts, <laughs> <laughs> and I forget Funny. them all the time. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I knew yeah. you needed this. You know, this it was, you know, oh, it's like, I've, oh. I've been on trips sweet. where I don't want to take my tripod, you know, so I, I feel like I am I turn into MacGyver sometimes when, you know, I go out and uh, Richard Dean Anderson, MacGyver. Oh, thing. I know who <laughs> MacGyver is, believe me. Because <laughs> yeah, I grew up watching that one. So did I. And, um, in my opinion, that is the best mas looking man in the world, <laughs> too. <laughs> And I liked him better when he got older, too, mm -hmm. when he was mm -hmm. in that other show. Oh, uh, yeah, what the Stargate. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was good. <laughs> anyway. Um, uh, but, yeah, so I feel like I'm a guyver sometimes because I'm using my, my, uh, my camera bag. You know, I prop it up onto tripod. something. Uh, sometimes I wrap my lenses in, you know, old T-shirts. And, you know, I use the T-shirts to, to prop up the camera. You know, <laughs> so I, I, I have all these things to to um, you know be able to take a nice steady shot but you know okay I have now I have to do another quick commercial because next week's show Joe Fitzpatrick is my guest and mm -hmm. we're gonna talk about tripods and support system mm -hmm. but you know I taught my flash class maybe it was yesterday maybe it was the day before they're blurring together no yesterday I was in the fact I had you must have been the day before <laughs> but one of the things about lighting is mm -hmm. just like Figuring it out, being mm -hmm. a troubleshooter, yeah. you know? It's yeah. like, oh, you know, they took a picture and there's this big ugly shadow and I'm like, well, what are you gonna do about that big ugly shadow? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just like with the tripods. Okay, I don't yeah. have a tripod. How am I gonna keep my camera steady? Mm -hmm. You know, it's yeah, once there's, you there's get the basics of photography do. down, mm -hmm. then you can start yeah, you're working, once you understand around. what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So all right. One of the other things that I like is, um, you know, extreme macro photography. Okay. So that's when you uh, take, I have a, a 105 macro lens, okay. and then you can take like a 50 millimeter uh, lens and, uh, and reverse it and put it on the front of your 105, and then that gets you really how up do close. You do, it, do you attach it, or how do you, what do you mean? Yeah, there's usually a, there's, a, um, there's a reversal ring that you can purchase and so you can but it goes on the it. front mm -hmm. of your yeah. macro mm -hmm. wow yeah, i don't know anything about that you can put the, the two fronts together and, and then screw it on um i usually just you know i usually have um like a roll of uh, duct tape just like macgyver <laughs> right, <there. laughs> and i just duck it <laughs> wow and, uh, that's, that works fine and so that just gives you even more range you can get even you can get really close wow mm -hmm. i did a panorama of a uh, paper wasp once 
you know, because I was, you know, I was getting that close that I had to piece it all together. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, that sounds mm -hmm. so cool. And it's good to have a focusing rail too, because if you can manipulate, um, you know, uh, getting that close, um, any slight motion is a big motion at that magnification. So uh, it's good to have uh, 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 focusing reel that okay. you, know, you can just sneak up on something. And the focusing rail, rail. Mm -hmm. how does that go? It goes on, it's on like your a, tripod? Yeah, it goes on and your then tripod it goes and then you can just, you know, turn the wheels and it just moves it really slow. And so it's just more, it's more slow, more, yeah, more it's, it's teensy slow turns and than if you tried to do it with your yeah, hand. I don't have one either, so, um, <laughs> so I just, you, you have know. friends who have stuff, though, <laughs> I, I can tell. <laughs> it's good to have friends who have lots of photography equipment, right, I've right. learned. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But I make do, you know, and so, um, but I should, I should get one, and um, because that would make things a lot easier, but, um, you know, I was able to, you know, just, you know, just um, make you it know, perfect. Just, yeah, make it perfect and, you know, take the shots. So, so mm -hmm. okay, so, all right, I'm going to go back to our landscape. Mm -hmm. So we got a tripod. Mm -hmm. We've got a cable release, mm -hmm. shutter cable release. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about our lens? Uh, wide angle uh, would be good, but you can, you can shoot um, landscape with a zoom. Uh, just depends on what you're wanting to photograph and, and how. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I do most of my landscape work uh, with a wide angle lens. Okay. Um, you know, if you wanted to get like the, like a 25 or 24 to 85, that would be a great one as well. Now, are you a full frame? Do you have a full frame camera no, or a crop, no. crop frame? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and, then, and then, so you're using a 24 but millimeter on a crop frame ca camera. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So um, it's not really that wide. I mean, it's wide, but no, not wide. No, but get this. Yeah. So I, I, I create my panoramas by taking several shots. Okay. And then putting all those pieces together in Photoshop. Now, before I felt like, um, you know, very comfortable with the ability of a, like a photo merge um, right. to put it all together, I was doing it all by hand. Um, when you're using a wide angle lens, uh -huh. uh, you get a, an awful lot of distortion. Oh, so I was, right. yeah, so I was out at Stiltsville once and I must have taken about 25 shots of this one particular scene that was a vertical. And so for a vertical, I always hold it, hold the camera horizontal because it creates a much larger original uh, file size. Okay. And so I, I put the camera on the tripod and I just went click, 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 click. And then, you know, I would just use... So you use did 20 shots tall? At least 20, yeah. Whoa, okay. Go because ahead. all I knew, because of the distortion, that I would only be able to use about... The middle yeah, part the middle of it. Part. Oh. And so I had to take lots of, you know, lots That's of That's really shots. good advice, though. Because, yeah. you know, we don't think about things like that. And know? now there's programs that will actually put things together um, Fix really well. Fix the distortion, well. you mm -hmm. mean? Yeah, um, to a point. I mean, uh, the, the photo merge that I'm using right now, um, and I, at my home studio, I have um, CS6. Okay. Um, and I'm using that just because I paid for it, and so I want. Yeah, it's know, I and they haven't changed it. Yeah, yet. not not a whole lot. Yeah, um, a little bit. Wait, you know what they changed? Although you don't care because you're not a no, portrait photographer. No, but I, I use I use all the updated Photoshop at work. Oh yeah, that's yeah, right. So, so you know what they've changed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Um, um, was that? I forgot what I was going to say, but um, yeah. So the photo merge is is getting better and better all the time. Yeah. And I used to, I used to give presentations to uh, various camera clubs uh, locally, and uh, some of the guys would say, "Hey, they, you know, you should really try the photo because I would be real proud and say, oh, I spent you know this amount of time on.' This oh, because you've masked every single picture. Yeah, yeah. Oh my yeah. God. So it's a. Uh, it's a good skill to, to know because if photo merge can't do it, yeah. then I go and I utilize the skills that I, I learned. You know, I, you know what, it's funny because I started in Photoshop 18 years ago mm -hmm. and uh, I knew how to do it, but I never wanted to do it. And, mm -hmm. I w and then when they came out with the photo merge, that's when I started doing panoramas because <laughs> I didn't, oh my God, it was so tedious. I, yeah. couldn't, I don't know how you could, I could stand it. Well, <laughs> I look at it this way. If, I, you know, if I'm creating an image that um, you know, I'm gonna, I want to sell, 
you know, as a fine art print, you know, for, you know, whatever print run that I'm going, going to do, um, you know, I, I want to spend the time yeah. on it. So I don't mind spending the time. Um, you know, for people that are shooting for stock or what, you know, it, it makes it harder, you know, that's it, not a good business model to run if, you know, uh, if you're spending hours and hours on right. just one image and, right. you know, they're asking for, you know, you know, thousands of images, you know, to, to, you know, get established as a stock photographer. Yeah. So that's hard to do. Um, so I, I'm geared more towards the fine art, you know, selling the prints. The collectors prints. and, yeah. yeah. So that I don't mind spending the time on. Okay. Even even today, you know. Yeah. Uh, if I have to, I, I you know, yeah. that's what I do. If it needs it, that's, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, okay, so we've got a tripod. Mm -hmm. We've got a wide-angle lens and a camera. Right. Um, another good thing to have release. is a um, polarizing filter. Oh, good advice. Yeah, because you get a lot of glare sometimes. You know, if you're shooting, um, you know, like midday, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, sun. Mm -hmm. And so you want to control your your reflections, even off of plants, and you know, it's not just for water. Right. Um, but you know. Yeah, because plants get like blown out in, mm -hmm. in different places, mm -hmm. and you can just yeah. turn that polarizer filter. Mm -hmm. I used to have a friend that uh, we would go out to the Everglades and shoot, and 11:30 would come around. Oh, it's time to take a rest, and then I was like, what? What are you doing? <laughs> you know, and so I I taught myself how to shoot at any time of day. So. Oh my God, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, so I I used to um, have my flash on uh -huh. uh, on top of my camera. Um, you know, at times where you wouldn't think that you would need a flash. You know, it's it's bright sunny day. You know, why do you need a flash? I used to have photographers that would laugh at me because it, right. why do you need your flash? You know, fill fill flash because yeah. it controls your your shadows and your shadows um, usually go dark uh, you know if you're it's like going to even out your lighting yeah and so I was photographing a, a hawk and I didn't want the shadows to go black on me you right. know and so you can put in just enough light so that it looks natural it doesn't look uh, you know it doesn't look flash right but it looks natural and you're um, talking to a flash girl here I love yeah. flash yeah. <laughs> yeah. but I you uh, know ever since you know it was funny because one of the guys that laughed at me the next week I saw him with his out flash there with on. his flash <laughs> yeah because once they yeah. learn yeah they don't uh, once they see how it just evens that light out mm -hmm. in the midday mm -hmm. I mean when in the midday you need more flash yeah yeah because you're gonna get a dark dark shadow if you, mm -hmm. if you balance you know if you meter yeah, on the on the really, bright side that's a really difficult time um, you know when I used to take people out at Clyde's uh, we used to do the photo uh, swamp walks out there and um, that's a really difficult time uh, you know at like closer to midday uh, you get you get an awful lot of you know those heavy shadows Real so hard, it's really difficult shooting shadows, yeah. environment um, so the polarizer filter, back to that, I just mm -hmm. wanted to, in case people are not using polarizer filters, you have to buy one that fits on your lens. Mm -hmm. And they can be very expensive. Yeah. You yeah, know, I have a mid-ranged, mid-priced mm -hmm. one. But Was it like $100 or something? I think I paid 100 for mine, but yeah. they go way up. Those mm -hmm. Lee filters are expensive, but mm -hmm. I haven't tried them, so I don't really know the difference. Yeah. But I guess it's different, like color tones or, I don't know exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but polarizer, when I learned about polar, because I didn't, I mean, I was a portrait photographer. I didn't even know what it was. Mm -hmm. And when I learned, I'm like, Those whoa, yeah. this makes it such makes a, a huge big, difference. Yeah, and it also difference. like gives like a more saturated color. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's really, really, that's good yeah. advice. All right. Mm -hmm. So am I ready to go out there yet? I got a tripod. I got a camera. I got, I got a much. wide I mean, lens. I got a shutter release. Polarizing memory filter. Cards, don't forget your memory cards. Lots everybody. of batteries. Yeah, batteries. <laughs> batteries. Yeah. I can't believe how many people come to my class. And it says right in the description of the class, make sure your batteries are fully charged. Yeah. And they, and they, yeah. they have, and our classes are hands-on. And if you're shooting video, they, too, the, that drains well, that your drains battery yeah, yeah, quite a bit. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right, bring so extra batteries. So what? Like, Bug spray. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You know, my friend Chris Hopkins, who we talked about last week on the show, I said, mm -hmm. why don't you be on my show? Because he, he could be like, how to outfit yourself. I mean, he's mm -hmm. got so much stuff, you mm -hmm. know, that's cool. Like he has the drinking, 
he called it a bladder or something like that because it it's lightweight unless yeah. it's full and doesn't take up space and and he's actually he gave me a shirt like one of those sun shirts mm -hmm. you know and yeah he's got talks about the dry backpacks to get and here's mm -hmm. the one you should get for why and he knows mm -hmm. all that swamp stuff he's even got the mosquito things to go over your face mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he doesn't want to be on my show <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. i don't know i've spent so many years out um, photographing in the everglades that um, i'm usually not wearing all that that uh, bug gear uh, you know and i don't like putting uh, spray on unless i really have to so you know, if I'm getting 20 bites uh, a minute, that's, that's, I can do that. Well, what I'm learning since I've been going out there more and more mm -hmm. is you'll know by the time you get out of the car yeah. if you need to put bug spray getting, on. Yeah, if you're getting <laughs> bit like 50 times. We didn't times, put bug spray you know. on last night. We were, <laughs> yeah. out, we were deep in the Fakahatchee mm -hmm. for maybe four hours, mm -hmm. and we didn't wear any bug spray. Yeah. So I didn't get bit at all. Mm -hmm. Nobody did. Yeah. So... But and then but yeah, the you, first you time I went out in it, September, though. I did have bug spray because mm -hmm. it was September, but it wasn't bad. And yeah. cr of course, Chris knew all the reasons why that was too. It has to do with the wind and the water, or something. Right. And <laughs> yeah, water levels too. I mean, yeah, if, water if levels and water If there's a lot of water, water the, um, the the mosquito count goes down quite a bit. So, so mm -hmm. yeah, so mm -hmm. yeah, sometimes it's bad though. Sometimes oh, yeah, I've been out in the Everglades. Bad. And I swear I caught something because <laughs> when I got home and uh, the next the, the next day I felt sick. Oh wow! And it was bad. I mean, I I had spray on everywhere. You know, I was you know. Maybe was, you got sick from the spray. <laughs> that it could be that too. You know? um, but I was getting bitten off a lot. Yeah. That's uh, and I was trying to you know photograph the moon and and um, you know I, just stepping out of the car. Was, was yeah, horrible. that's what I've learned. <laughs> you know, by the time you get out of the car, yeah. and if you're anywhere near Flamingo, forget it. <laughs> it's, 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 bad it's always down bad there. there. It's uh, summertime. You know, it, it, it can get really bad. I wonder if that's where he he keeps telling me about a place with abandoned abandoned rocket. Oh, that's further north in the park. Okay. Yeah, I the Nike site. What's it called? It's called the um, the Nike. Uh, they used to have Nike missiles, so it's a Nike missile site. Like, how do you spell Nike? Uh, N-I-K-E. Just like the tennis shoes? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, that yeah. must be where he's talking about. Mm -hmm. He's like, we got to go there. we got to yeah. go there. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> All right. Now, so you have a graphic artist background, too. Mm -hmm. So are you a Lightroom guy or Photoshop guy? No, Photoshop. Uh, Photoshop. I do have Lightroom. I don't use it. <laughs> I, I've been s involved with uh, using Photoshop for all the, you know, all the time that I've been using it. And, um, you know, it's, it's something that um, I've been using since, I think, Photoshop 4, when um, I, I actually learned as I was working for a company. Okay. Um, I, was a, I was actually an illustrator for a comp uh, an apparel company in Miami. Okay. And um, I would produce um, artwork for roller coasters. All over the country, Whoa. yeah. Was it like the posters or what no? T-shirt, T-shirt art. Oh, T-shirts. Yeah, T-shirt okay. art for uh, roller coasters. So the the Ghost Rider uh, or um, you know like the Hulk uh, coaster. Oh, that's cool. You know, at uh, I forgot what the park is. Uh, um, I don't know. Yeah, I forgot the name. Bush Gardens. Okay. You know. um, so yeah, so that was uh, that was a fun a fun gig to to work for a while, but. You know, that's I, how you learn Photoshop. I learned Photoshop um, pretty much. Um, I was freelancing for them, so I was at home, and uh, you know, it was a comfortable, you know, um, safe environment for me to just pick it up and, yeah. and start doing it. And um, and it was a um, you know amazing. Uh, a lot of the uh, techniques that I I taught myself then, uh, I still use to to this day, yeah. especially for for masking and uh, creating masks for I you know, create images. a mask on almost every picture I mm -hmm. that I actually edit. Now mm -hmm. I do use Lightroom mm -hmm. and I am still a portrait and event photographer mm -hmm. so I use Lightroom for like the quick yeah, edits yeah. but if I'm going to really edit mm -hmm. bring it, I bring it into Photoshop and it seems yeah. like I need a mask on almost everything I do. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know why. When I'm teaching, I'm like, why do I use so many masks? And I can't <laughs> think of anything. And then every day, well, I'm <laughs> it, you're, you're seeing how, how you can isolate certain areas yeah. so that um, you can, you know, um, I, I, w I always call it optimizing an image. So, um, you know, you can, um, you know, change colors and, you know, to get it to match better. Like, like for my job at, at uh, Prince G, G. Clay Shop, um, I, I have to get files um, you know, either photographs or, or people's artwork that's been digitized, um, I get it. And then I have to um, make sure that it's going to print exactly how we see it on, on screen. Right. And so um, we have to match it to the media that, that we're going to pr be printing onto. Okay. So if it's a um, glossy paper, that's going to be different from an art paper that's cotton based. Okay. And so you know, we have, we have uh, profiles that uh, we can actually preview the profile of how it's going to look on paper. And then we take and work on that file uh, to match the actual image that we, actually, that we get. So you have to actually take pieces of the mm -hmm. thing and so say, I'm, change I'm the hue a little bit. Yeah, I'm constantly using masks. And, wow. and so some of these See, can get really detailed. And you got to do it quick, too, because this is a, it's, a, it's a business. Right. You know? Time is and money. Time is money, yes. And I, well, I just... Everybody who works uh, with me knows yeah. I say that all the time, because yeah, like, it's so easy to get sucked into Photoshop. Yeah. And you just, time is money, yeah, time yeah. is money. Mm -hmm. you got to get that picture done in 10 minutes. And it's hard finding people that are, that are really good, you know, in, in, that work in Photoshop, that can work in that type of, in, in, type of environment. And so, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a challenge. Well, it's now I want to have challenge. you back on for a show about sure. the printing stuff. And yeah. I don't know anything about that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really interested. Well, when I was doing the art festivals, um, I did the art festivals for about four years. And um, I was never happy beforehand uh, with prints that I would get from professional mm -hmm. labs. Mm -hmm. And they would just run it through the machine and you get whatever, you know. Yeah, you get what you get. If, if the chemicals were good, then hey, yeah. you know, they worked out. <laughs> yeah. If they weren't, then your know, colors might be slightly off. So I was really never happy. And I, I, that was another reason why I, you know, I would tell people, you know, when digital was, was up and coming, and I would be like, I can't wait, I can't wait. And I had all, all my friends, you know, everyone that I knew, you know, that uh, was shooting film, ah, digital, you know, blah, 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 you know, I that'll know. never, you know, film's the way to go. <laughs> you know, I'll be I, like, was, I was the first professional photographer mm -hmm. in this area to go digital, mm -hmm. and boy, yeah. did I get it from everybody. Yeah, <laughs> it was amazing what the backlash was on that, but um, uh, now everyone's shooting digital. I know, and, I know. And, and uh, I, I couldn't wait, I mean, there's the cost involved with you know uh, oh you know slide after slide where you know you're editing so it's a, there's a cost and then time and then scanning you have to scan all your images so um, you're saving yourself all of that and um, and so yeah I just I want to we're gonna we're gonna do a whole yeah, show we'll, on we'll that we'll do that so all right so what what like do you have any like tips for a landscape photographer like any favorite tips. Or any, like, what are their big, biggest mistakes you see? Over sharpening. Over sharpening. Mm -hmm. Ah. Yeah. yeah. I see an awful lot of uh, photographers, and you know, I think the emphasis um, is is on how sharp your image is, and so some people kind of take it too far. And they take it over. And you're talking about over sharp sharpening in Photoshop or Lightroom, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, as, as far as going and taking the photo, um, you're, you know, going out and, and photographing landscapes, and you follow your passion. You know, if you like seascapes, you know, do that. Um, um, you know, going out into the swamp is another, and you know, that offers its own challenges. And you know, so um, research where you're going mm -hmm. and the type of lighting. Um, don't don't like rush out and expect you know to get the the shots that you've been wanting to get um you, sometimes it takes time for you to get to know a place and so so like go out several yeah times go out maybe. several times um you can't do that if you're on a trip so you kind of have to you know work by your instincts um but you know time of day is also important 
Um, and so, you know, the, the, the uh, most beautiful shots are you know, like early morning or, you know, uh, as, as sunset um, is coming. Um, I, one of my favorite shots that I took recently was of the famous Z tree in Everglades mm -hmm. National Park. Mm -hmm. And in, in my mind's eye, um, I, had, uh, I had an image of what I wanted to capture of that tree. And I wanted to get the, the Milky Way in the shot. Oh my God, Yeah, how cool so is that? I go there and I, I, you know, I'm like, I don't think the, it's gonna work. I think, you know, the Milky Way is on the other side. <laughs> and so sure enough, you know, um, it, it's not gonna work. Ever? Like, no. Um, like you couldn't go on the photographer's ephemeris and find out when no, the Milky I know, Way is? No, I, I know where the Milky Way it's is. It's never gonna be it's there. It's never gonna <laughs> be there. It's not, no. <laughs> So yeah. what I did was um, I, I took a shot around sunset and uh, then I, I drove about two miles to a spot where I knew I could get a nice shot of the Milky Way. Uh -huh. And the, the best time that I, that I feel is the, is the best time to photograph the Milky Way is uh, right as the sky turns black. And if you do a long exposure, like a 15, 20 second, 30 second exposure, uh, the sky is going to still be blue. Oh. Yeah, so and you you can get the, the so Milky Way like in there. So is that like an hour after sunset? No, no, it's like it, right after the sun goes down, you gotta you know be there at sunset mm -hmm. and then start taking the shots and then oh, you know. Oh, so really? Yeah, so okay. as the sun's going down and it's getting darker and darker, you don't want the sky blue as as you see it, but right as it turns, you know, it's turning to that black color, then you know you can you can get it. Okay. So that um, you know, you still can get that blue. So you know, you it's like a deep picture. blue, and then I I was able to merge that image um, so with the Z tree. So you're making us all think that we can do that <laughs> shot someday, and it's you cheated. I cheated, <laughs> but I would never I would never have it published like that's like like you, know, you that's, didn't do yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's more of like an art piece for right, me. Right for you, I get yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. So, but it I, is funny how many purists there are who get all huffy oh, about I know. like, oh, yeah. that's, that's you know. not real. I forget I was looking. <laughs> I was with somebody. He was a guest on my show, and mm -hmm. he was looking through one of the magazines from Naples, and there was a picture of a close up of a panther, and he. Mm -hmm. This should be told that it was taken in a zoo and just, mm. you know, well, you know, maybe it did. I don't know. I just, mm. people are real purists. I was, right. I'm learning. Exactly. So. <laughs> so what's next for Brian Call? Oh, gosh. Um, if I can get out in the water with shark, more sharks, uh, that would be awesome. Did you go shark diving? Yeah, I've been. I've been out to Tiger Beach, um, yeah, uh, with uh, Mike, um, Chris, uh, Chris Gillette uh, from Gator Boys and... Um, he was, it was great timing the first time that we had done it. Um, it was the day before my birthday and he sent me a text. Hey, sharks tomorrow? <laughs> and I thought, did someone put you up to this? Now, when you say shark, what do you mean by that? Oh, we, we, go out, we actually go out um, in a boat. Uh, for, for my birthday, we had gone out to uh, Jupiter. Uh -huh. And um, we have to go about three and a half miles offshore uh, to get into federal waters because it's not allowed in state waters. Um, but um, in federal waters, we can go out, and the guys um, uh, they they bring uh, chum, you know, uh, fish parts and uh -huh. blood and everything, and um, we all jump in the water and swim with the sharks. And, and swim with the sharks, and it took a, about forty-five minutes for them to show up uh, for that first dive that I was on. I don't think I'd um, be up for that. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was funny because once the boat stopped, um, you know the. Uh, Michael, Michael Donellis and uh, Chris Gillette, they, they said, well, we got to go in the water first to make sure it's safe, you know, to, safe to go swimming with the sharks. <laughs> but I thought that was a, a funny oh thing. We're going to make sure it's safe for you guys. So um, I guess there were bull sharks in, in the water at that point. And so um, we all get in and they didn't really stick around. Uh, they they kind of took off and it got quiet for a while and about 40 45 minutes later they you know the um, sandbar sharks started coming up and and I kind of drifted a little bit from the group and I didn't realize and so I see this um, I'm I'm am watching this this shark coming you know up oh my God. and I was like oh this is so cool you know and then and 
I just happen to look up and I'm like, I'm, I'm away from myself. the boat. I'm by myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But the shark, he wasn't, he was just coming up. He wasn't yeah. coming up to attack me or anything. Right. Um, and, and it's been really um, quite educational Are you taking for pictures? Me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, and, yeah. and taking uh, video of my website, GoPro. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they are. They are? Yeah, I didn't yeah, see them. Yeah, they're I up I on scanned, my website. I and I've I got a couple through. of, uh, like, two or three videos um, of underwater work that I've done on Vimeo as okay. well. So okay. if you look up my name, it may come up, you know, right away. I'm, I'm not sure. I've tried looking up my name on there. And it doesn't come up right away. But, but are they attached if you, to your if website? If you type in, oh yeah, um, uh, on my Facebook. Um, oh, okay. I've listed them on my Facebook. Um, and your Facebook is Brian Call Photography or Brian Call? Uh, uh, Brian Call. Just Brian Call. Yeah. Is a mm -hmm. personal page though? Yeah, so it's like a personal slash um, you know business. I've been kind of keeping it both. Um, well, you know. The personal pages, more people see your stuff. Mm -hmm. The business pages, only three percent of your posts, or mm -hmm. only three percent of your fans see your posts on a business page. Mm -hmm. So, a personal page is better for business. Yeah, yeah. So, mm -hmm. anyway, so yeah. okay, I'm just so I usually people to find if you. I have like a you know, and I, I have a link to my Facebook page on on, on BrianCallPhotography.com. BrianCallPhotography.com. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so you can you can find my videos that way. But uh, if you type in um, uh, to swim with lemon sharks, uh, th it'll come up. In Vimeo. Yeah, on Vimeo. Yeah. I'm going to go look after <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> and I've got one of, um, I was out there with a, um, in Big Cypress with an eight-foot alligator. And oh, so, my god. Yeah, that, that's always fun. I, you well, know, I mean, I used to lead tours, you yeah. know, out of Big Cypress uh, at at, um, at Clyde's uh, gallery in Big Cypress, and um, so I mean, we're in the water, and there's a chance we hardly ever see alligators on right. on the tours, you know. But um, you know, we're walking, so it was kind of like uh, not a big step for me to you know want to you know go and do some underwater work, uh, and it's beautiful. It's really beautiful under underwater in the swamp. And so that's kind of like my, uh, well, I, I really want to pursue that a lot more. That sounds, and it's very yeah. unique because most of us are not going to do that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you, got, yeah. you got a niche there. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chris, uh, Chris Gillette, he's, he's, uh, he's, he's like my mentor. On that oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, I love the work that he does uh, out there, and um, it's pretty amazing. Uh, the type of shots that he gets. And okay. So when I get a real underwater housing, um, yeah, because they're expensive. Yeah, they are. Yeah. I got a bag. Yeah. That's what I yeah, have. Yeah, the Ewa like Marine, something like that. I don't remember. Yeah, I, I have an Ewa Marine right now. But um, um, I guess it's almost time. But <laughs> All right. <laughs> but, yeah. I, I don't remember the bag. I, but uh, I, I actually have a video on uh, YouTube. Mm -hmm. on, um it was produced by Aquamedia, a company mm -hmm. that does... Actually, I should turn you guys on to each other. Mm -hmm. Aquamedia, he is just a YouTube channel all about, like, underwater photography and mm -hmm. underwater video and things like that. So mm -hmm. I did a training video on underwater photography in a pool, mm -hmm. like a beginner class. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> yeah, and it's free. I mean, it's on YouTube. So yeah, yeah. anyway, that uh, so I've got the bag. It was cheap. I mean, the first time I looked in the bags, they were 500 bucks. Now, it, the, mine was like, I forget, like 50 60 $70. It was cheap. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. anyway, well, I guess we're it's time to wrap up. <laughs> 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 we're getting the hint. <laughs> right. <laughs> but we, we, you have to come back. It's only two hours. Okay. Two, two yeah, hours. it's not bad. It wasn't bad, yeah, right? Bad <laughs> and you don't have to drive back into the sun. No, Sunsets no. on this side. Oh, I guess you should stay for a sunset here. It's beautiful. Yeah. That's well, I'm, I'm going to be meeting my friends out at the at uh, Big Cypress at Gallery. The swamp. Yeah. You're going the swamp. to the swamp. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got a swamp between us, right? right we got to right. go right through it. So, all right. So I'm going to do a couple things. We have a, a a free video. It's a free webinar called "How to Get a Solid Photography Education in Just Four Weeks." It's a 45-minute video. It is an infomercial about our class, but you're going to learn a lot in that video. So you'll find that link and all of the links um, in our show notes for today's episode on understandphotography.com. 
Next week, my guest is going to be Joe Fitzpatrick. You guys have seen Joe before. He works here at Understand Photography. And we're going to talk about tripods and camera support systems. So turn, tune in here on the Understand Photography Facebook page if you want to watch us live. So we're here on Fridays at 4 o'clock Eastern Time Live. Or you can watch the recordings on YouTube or listen to it as a podcast on iTunes. It's the Understand Photography Show. Our website is understandphotography.com. Don't forget to consider coming to Mount Dora with me. We've got three openings. I'm Peggy Farron. Thank you so much for watching episode 21 of the Understand Photography Show, and we will see you next week. <laughs>